Okay, if I said to you, what's one times one? What'd you say, one? It equals one? Now, what would Newton say is that? Action times an action. That's a reaction, right? Anybody in here that thinks one times one equals one, then you give me two pounds and I'll give you a pound back. And we'll call that even, right? Because one times one equals one. An uh, unbalanced equation. What we need to do is, the first thing in math is you're supposed to have a balanced equation. One times one equaling one is an unbalanced equation. But the identity element, which is like the Jim Crow laws of the 60s, they say that anything multiplied by one becomes that same number as itself. Well, the laws of physics has to break down in order for that to take place. Action and reaction for one times one to equal one. In comparison to if I said, um, what's a dollar times a dollar? Anybody know it's a dollar? What's a dime times a dime or 10 pence? 10 pence times 10 pence, that's a pound, right? Yes. What about 100 pence times 100 pence? That's a pound times a pound, right? That's a hundred dollars, ain't it? What about a quarter? What about four quarters times four quarters? That's a dollar, right? That's a pound, right? Well, that's four dollars. Now, all of these things are legal. The banks can say a dollar times a dollar is a dollar and give you that. Or the banks can say to a friend, a dollar times a dollar is a quarter times a quarter. It's four quarters times four quarters, and give that person four dollars. They can say to another person, a dollar times a dollar is um, 100 pence times 100 pence. That person gets 100 dollars, so that money is generated. And this is all legal. Do you think it's not happening in the banks? This is what one times one equaling one has got us. This inconsistency of our monies and our economy is sitting in the balance and the rest of our future is sitting in the balance because our science has been stunted as a result of the problems in mathematics because math asks for the basic laws of physics to break down in order for one times one to equal one. In order for one times zero to equal nothing, laws of conservation of energy has to disappear. The founding laws of math are supposed to support the laws of physics. They are arm in arm. They cannot be in controversy with each other. So we need an audit on the platonic solids. We need an audit on the square root of two. And we need an audit on action and reaction. Or we either got to get rid of, we say one times one equals one, and there's no action and reaction. One or the other. You can't have both. And until we make that change, we're in trouble. Be stunted as a species. The identity principle, the identity property, it says that one times nothing equals nothing. So now you have the laws of physics have to now adjust because something just disappeared. Conservation of energy, energy can't be created or destroyed. So if one times zero equals zero, then what happened to the energy of the one? Isn't that the same problem that Stephen Hawkins were talking about with the event horizon and the information going in and still being present? that conflict that was started? Well, that's because of the math. The principles in the math are not founded on truth. It's not founded on substance. The identity principle, anything times zero is zero, and anything times one is one. Where is that, is that number? Where is that exemplified in nature or in universal phenomena? You know what's interesting? In 1856, a man from Liverpool named Richard Dover Statter challenged the Dewey Decimal System and said that it was wrong and created an entirely new system to show how it can be brought into correction. So I'm not the first person to state this. It's a number of people did it, but look up Richard Dover Statter. Try and find him. You won't find him because he's been erased from history almost. Our planet is moving away from our sun at six inches a year. You guys know that. 15 centimeters a year, our planet is pushing away from the sun. So in less than uh, half a billion years, our planet will be out of the Goldilocks zone. We'll be somewhere near where Mars is, somewhere halfway between there. So life will not be able to sus be sustained on this planet anymore. So if we're going to be able to, uh, to sustain ourselves as a species, we have to become interstellar. Not just interplanetary, we have to become interstellar. But with approximations, you cannot become interstellar. You cannot become interstellar with a, a point that will take you all the way over here with a straight line when the actual event is taking place over here when you're going 600 quadrillion miles. You can't make a mistake. You need precision. And that's what the math is about. 
these pieces predict the natural distribution of matter and the distribution of where you can find yourself in that space. The Titanic is headed to an iceberg over there with our numbers. If we don't make a change soon, we're gonna crash as a species because our math needs to work in order for our science and our future to develop.